questioning if they're all related. A new review of the U.S. tax on, on the tax on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi slams the State Department. And we have the latest from the school shooting that took the lives of 26 people. Today's Wednesday, December 19th, 2012. It's the station with the most news in South Texas. From KRIS Studios, this is KRIS News at Sunrise in HD. Good Wednesday morning to you. We're so glad you could join us today. I'm Janine Reyes. I'm Dave Freilich. We're here with meteorologist Juan Acuna in for Matt. And just ridiculous record heat inside <laughs> of a week before it's Christmas. It's starting out warm, which is not a good it's indication because indica it's only going to get hotter. Even hotter, that's right. We're into the 70s right now for us here in Corpus Christi, 74 degrees. Just a tad bit cooler to the northwest around George West, 71 degrees. The coolest extended forecast, we'll talk about that within the hour. And a lot more weather at about 6.06. Yeah, good news right. of this heat, it won't stay that way. Yes. That's right. right Thanks, Juan. Well, another Corpus Christi smoke shop has been robbed at gunpoint. This marks the third one this month. Police aren't sure if these three crimes are related. They are looking into it. Meanwhile, Melissa Schroeder got some surveillance video of this latest robbery. In this surveillance video, you can it makes me sick that somebody would take advantage of us like that. Melissa Schroeder, KRES 6 News. The owners say some of their employees recognized the men in the video as customers but couldn't identify them. If you can, you're asked to please call police. The Crime Stoppers line is 888-TIPS. The woman charged with child is required to reconsider the whole bond issue again. New information this morning about the September attack on the U.S. Embassy in Libya. An independent panel says inadequate security at the U.S. Consulate in Benghazi was caused by failure at the State Department. The Accountability Review Board determined no individuals violated their duties, but that systematic failures plus leadership and management deficiencies within the State Department led to a security situation that was grossly inadequate. U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans were killed in that attack on the U.S. consulate on September 11th. The panel's report made 29 recommendations to improve embassy security, and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says she accepts them all. Those recommendations and findings will be presented to Congress later today. Speaker of the House John Boehner has unveiled his plan B to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff. The speaker says President Obama hasn't been serious about finding a balanced solution, so he's moving forward with his own plan. Boehner's idea is to go ahead with a vote in the House that raises taxes on everyone making more than a million dollars, while at the same time cutting spending to benefit programs like Medicare. Democrats have already rejected this plan. They say it has no chance of passing the Senate. The community struggled before recuperating down to the lower 70s at 10 o'clock. So we'll have another weather update at about 616. Juan, thanks. Time now to take a look at yesterday's stories in Rewind with Jennifer Lita. Our crew cab loaded truck of Texas. Welcome back. 612 now on your Wednesday morning. Instagram finds itself in a cyber storm of outrage. That tops our look at consumer news. In a blog post, the popular photo sharing site announced a change in its user agreement, hinting it might use your uploaded photos and ads to market to your friends. The terms suggest Facebook, which recently bought Instagram, wants to integrate Instagram into its ad serving system and promote an item by telling users their friends like it. Many users have vowed to cancel their Instagram accounts, complaining the new terms essentially let the service sell users' photos. Nearly three in four employers will be handing out end-of-the-year bonuses. That's according to a survey by global outplacement consultancy challenger Gray and Christmas, which found 72% of employers plan to offer some type of year-end bonus. That's up 53% from a year ago. Among those responding to this year's survey, only 21% said no bonuses would be distributed this year. According to a couponcabin.com survey, many Americans are feeling positive about what the new year has in store for them. 52% of American adults are optimistic 2013 will be a better year for them financially than years past. The reason for the brighter financial outlook could be because nearly 4 out of 10 adults say they're ready to make some changes when it comes to their money habits. A new study shows you may be buying mislabeled seafood in restaurants or at the grocery store. Linda Bacchetto has that story. Buying seafood can... These two need to be stopped. There's no telling how many other people they've done this to. And we hope that others come forward. Let's head over to the Internet now and see what's trending online this morning. On Yahoo, Paula Broadwell is trending. The federal government has formally notified Broadwell's attorneys that she will not be charged with cyber stalking in connection with that sex scandal that led to the resignation of David Petraeus as CIA director. Petraeus resigned from the CIA post after acknowledging an extramarital affair. 
On Google, Lindsay Lohan is trending. The New York Post is reporting Lohan recently caused a plumbing nightmare on the set of Scary Movie 5. Lohan apparently clogged the toilet in her trailer, which prompted all the other bathrooms on the movie's Atlanta lot to stop working for two days. The mess reportedly took more than two days to clean up. That's why everything was shut down for two days, causing production on the film to fall behind schedule. It's gonna be and on YouTube, this is the ultimate a cappella rendition of all of NSYNC's hits. The group is called Pinta. I don't know what they're called, but they sing anything by the 90s boy band from pop to bye 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 to tearing up my heart. And they, went, visiting their side? and they went ahead and put this out because YouTube wasn't <laughs> around in the year 2000 when everyone was singing. All of NSYNC's hits and you know, probably in grade school. Were you an NSYNC fan? You could, you could tell the truth. Let me tell you something. Not anybody. If I like something <laughs> that's not cool for a guy like I tell you, right? That's true. Real Housewives of Beverly true. Hills, anyone? Um, the Bachelor. No, Bachelor. I was not that's a true. fan of NSYNC. Okay. But if you are, good, good for to you. know. <laughs> this is the season of giving. Some people are giving the gift of a family. Coming up, we'll tell you about some Houston area kids who are getting their greatest present ever this holiday season. 621 right now on your Wednesday morning. The good deal access has the trucks. Welcome back at 624 now on your Wednesday morning. Well, just in time for the holidays, nearly 90 children got the greatest present of all, really. They got parents. It really is. Dozens of kids officially adopted at the Juvenile Justice Center in downtown Houston. Brad Woodard has that story. You're aware that the parent child... Well, before we get to a gradual warm-up by the weekend and early next week, which, of course, is Christmas and Christmas Eve, so... A Looking whole lot going what on. a nice uh, cool yeah, It's a roller coaster yeah. of temperatures on the way. It is. Well, today is December 19th. It's National Oatmeal Muffin Day. Not a fan. <laughs> and on this day in 1980, Dolly Parton's first movie, 9 to 5, opened nationwide. And on this day, uh, 14 years ago, I got married, so I got to say happy, happy anniversary, anniversary to my wife. Yes. <laughs> on the off chance she's watching. Actor Mike Lookingland, Bobby from The Brady Bunch, is 52 today. Actress Alyssa Milano is 40. Here's a look at some local birthdays. Today at 4. Welcome back. It's coming up on 632 now on your Wednesday morning, December 19th. Someone robbed another Corpus Christi smoke shop at gunpoint this week. That's the third one this month. There's some surveillance video, and in it, you can see two men walk into the S&G Glass Works on Castoris. This was on Monday night. They make their way to the back of the store, and in a moment, they return with an employee who's got his hands up in the air after he's being had a gun pointed at his back, you see right there. Later, a third man comes in in a red hoodie. The three take a few things from the counters and shelves. They also stole a couple hundred dollars in cash. Now, if you have any information on this robbery or the other two, you're asked to please call Crime Stoppers at 888-TIPS. A judge hearing in this case is set for April. The Corpus Christi City Council got a look at how much a proposed street user fee will cost taxpayers. Yeah, the fee revenues would help the city come up with the $55 million annually that's needed to start repairing and hopefully at some point maintaining the streets. Here's a look at the proposed rates that were presented yesterday. People in homes smaller than 1,000 square feet would see about a $4 monthly increase on their water bill. Owners of homes between 1,000 and 2,300 square feet would see an increase of nearly $7. And those with homes larger than 2,300 square feet would see an increase of nearly $14 per month. Now, there's also a, a similar tiered system for businesses. A building between 1,000 to 10,000 square feet would get an increase of nearly $15. 10,000 to 30,000 square foot buildings would get a nearly $70 monthly increase. And businesses with buildings larger than 30,000 square feet would get hit with an increase of nearly $140 per month. If the council approves this plan, you could start seeing the fee on your water bill by next May. In national news... I'll we'll have another weather update at about 646. Juan, thanks. There's some new information this morning about that September attack on the U.S. Embassy in Libya. An independent panel says inadequate security at the U.S. consulate in Benghazi was caused by failure at the State Department. The Accountability Review Board determined no individuals violated their duties, but systematic failures plus leadership and management deficiencies within the State Department led to a security situation that was grossly inadequate. 
U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans were killed in an attack on the U.S. consulate on September 11th. The panel's report made 29 recommendations to improve embassy security, and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says she accepts them all. Those recommendations and findings will be presented to Congress later today. Speaker of the House John Boehner has unveiled his plan B to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff. The Speaker says President Obama hasn't been serious about finding a balanced solution, so he's moving forward with his own plan. Boehner's idea is to go ahead with a vote in the House that raises taxes on everyone making more than a million dollars, while at the same time cutting spending to benefit programs like Medicare. Now, Democrats have already rejected this plan. They say it has no chance of passing the Senate. The man who police... 7, seven Stanton. Welcome back, 644 now on your Wednesday morning. There's a new procedure to help patients who suffer from debilitating tremors in their arms and hands. This outpatient procedure is described as scalpel-free surgery because there's no incision. Avis Favaro brings us the details. Officially gets underway Friday, December 21st. All right, time now to take a look at what's coming up later today. The search will continue for a missing swimmer. This began on Monday in Port Aransas. Coast Guard continued its search yesterday. Still no sign of that swimmer, though. A Coast Guard helicopter flew over the jetties just miles away from where employees at the seaside condos say they saw that man go under. He seemed like he was struggling. He'd been there too long. He couldn't get back, and even though he tried, he'd wash back a little further or he'd go down. Meanwhile, authorities say no missing person reports have been filed. Nationally, later today, there'll be a major push for gun control in the wake of the tra tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary. Two House Democrats say they'll ask for a vote on legislation banning high-capacity magazines. The legislation mirrors a bill in the Senate banning magazines with more than 10 bullets. Mexican-American singer better or worse as the person of the year for 2012. Right now for our Channel 6 viewers, it's time to check in with Savannah Guthrie to see what's coming up on the Today Show. Good morning, coming up on a web and we'll prove it. Check in to cash. Welcome back. As many of you probably enjoy your breakfast, a word about what some people might have for lunch because the McRib mm. is back this week. <laughs> always a big deal. And Hasn't right. it been back for a while? Well, you know, it's always coming and going. That's it brought is. about a couple interesting. interesting points here. I never knew why the McRib actually got going on the McDonald's menu all the way back in the early 80s, but apparently, according to an article that was out, it, it, it first was brought about because the Chicken McNuggets had been introduced and there was, they were so popular, there was a shortage of the, those Chicken Nuggets. So they came up with a different product, the pork product, the I McRib. I gotta say, I'm not a McRib fan. Well, you, well, My you son know, likes them. Here's the deal, the people who like them love, love them. them. They do. Yeah, that's and true. They wait for them to come out yeah. and... That's why McDonald's has done so well with this product. It, it was out in 81 then disappeared in 85. I didn't realize this and then was gone till about 94. Mm -hmm. But now, mm -hmm. you know, it's come and gone like a million times right. since then. And that's become its own marketing strategy. The McDonald's uh, marketing department apparently knows that it can't create that type of coming and going with any other product. So that's why the McRib is always kind of perpetually yeah. in cycle. Kind of unfortunate it, if you enjoy it and you're craving it and then you it just goes can't away, get yeah. it. You know what it is though? They know that they need to keep it away at times. It saves you from yourself. That's what makes it a treat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it saves you from there yourself you other ways too, maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, it started in September with 36 singers and ended last night with a winner on the season finale of NBC's The Voice. The final three contestants yes. took the stage one last time at the end of a two-hour special. There's the extended, if we can get it up, 88 today and then 60. Christmas Day, a weak front comes into the area. Hopefully, it'll drop us into the 50s. And we are on the weather roller. There you go. <laughs> Have a wonderful Wednesday. See you back here at noon.